let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Shall we pray? And dear Lord, this morning as we come to worship, we pray that your beauty will be seen in each person here. Lord, we just thank you for your saving grace. And we pray that as we worship together, we'll be encouraged to take your beauty out into the community and neighborhood in which we live. This we pray in your name. Amen. We'll thank uh, the worship band there for introducing us to worship this morning and we have an opportunity to sing together and it's song number 241. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me that's right not for the person next to you he did for that as well but it is a personal relationship that we have with jesus and we remember that this morning so we stand and uh, we're singing these words through excellent
lovely. Would you like to take your seats? Bold, I approach the eternal throne. Are you bold in your approach? Bold, I approach the eternal throne. Oh, it's good, isn't it? Jesus, what a beautiful name. Son of God, Lamb, Son of Man, Lamb that the slain, joy and peace, strength and hope, grace that blows all fear away because I can approach the throne of God with boldness. Boldness. Because I've been made clean by that bold. I can see some of you by your white shirts don't use bold. But there we are. We're going to sing this through because we can approach the throne of grace with boldness. ask whether we can add the words to verse 2 on the screen and maybe we could just listen to the music being played through as we just think about these words grace that blows all fear away because we have the victory in Christ don't we we have the victory which gives us boldness but we have fear don't we Grace that blows all fear away. Jesus, what a beautiful one. Just listen to the music as we bring our fears and claim the boldness as we come to God in prayer. Thank you. And dear Lord, we just thank you that it is with boldness that we can approach your throne. We just thank you that it was through Jesus who died and rose again that gives us the opportunity through your grace to come into your presence. And Lord, as we come into your presence this morning, we bring to you those things in our, on our hearts that concern us those people that we know who are poorly, those people who we know 
who are living with bereavement. Those people that we know who are living with life-threatening illnesses. Those people who we know who are making a choice between food or fuel. And Lord, we pray that you would be with them this morning. And Lord, where we are, that we can encourage and support them during their time of need. Our hearts go out to areas where there is conflict. In particular, we think of those people living in the Ukraine. And we pray that you would bring peace into that situation. Lord, we pray that you would work through your people to bring relief. But Lord, through the leaders that you would bring uh, a solution to the problems there. Lord, we continue to uh, uphold you as we worship together. We just thank you for all that you've given us. And we pray that as we think on your word today, that it will affect our actions and our lives in this coming week, that we will take your light into the world in which we live. This we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Now, just before Easter, we had a, a series called Encounters with Jesus. Very good. And uh, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about encounters with the risen Lord. Is that okay? And uh, um, today we're going to look at uh, the road to Emmaus. Uh, next week, we're going to look at Thomas. And, uh, um, and then we're just going to carry through... Uh, through to Pentecost about uh, looking at encounters with the risen Lord because it's through looking at what Jesus did that enables us to understand how we in our context can encourage other people to have an encounter with the risen Lord now I'm a bit out of the loop because I've been on holiday I know it's a hard life isn't it uh, um, was anyone asked to do the Bible reading? Must be me then. Okay, so we're going from Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 35. It's a long reading. I do apologize, and I will do my best. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since he, this all took place. In addition, some of our women were amazed us, they went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. 
They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Amen. Was that okay? Oh, I'll do it again then, another week. Now, we're going to sing again. We're going to sing the, the chorus, uh, the song Praise Him, and our YP band is going to uh, accompany us in the singing of this song. So that's one thing. The second thing is while we're singing a song, we're going to continue in our worship by giving in our offering. So lots of things to remember. And what I need to remember is that Linda James is going to say a prayer when it's all over. Is that all right? Excellent. So don't let me forget you, Linda. Now, we're going to stand because we like standing. Uh, wait, 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 Sophie, wait. Okay, are we ready? Are we having a little introduction? Yeah. Who's going to do the offering? We've got some kids. Noah's there. Excellent. Wonderful. Words are on the screen. Are we ready then, Neil? Yeah. Right, okay then. Thank you. Up we can stand. Lovely. Take your seats and Linda is going to say a prayer. Amen. 
Thank you. And as if by magic, the announcements. Good morning. It's really good to see you all uh, this morning. It's really good to have some visitors with us, and it's lovely to see John and Sue Alcock, uh, the parents of Rachel and Joanne. Thank you for visiting us. It's always a pleasure to see you here uh, visiting. All the news that you need to know are in the weekly bulletin this week, and um, some of you, eagle eyes, will have noticed that there is a typo. Um, we need to we need to continue to pray for uh, Ruth Shepherd and for Jeff, who are still unwell at this time. Um, before the meeting, I was made aware that Arnold Tilling is currently in hospital, undergoing some tests. He's got an infection, so if you could think of him and Pat at this time. We think of Louise, um, who received the sad news uh, this week that um, uh, um, Uncle Nigel Nash passed away. So we think of you, Louise, and also of Joy and Alan Campbell, who have been uh, bereaved of their sister-in-law, Ellen Oakley. I would like to say a very big thank you to everyone who helped on Friday afternoon clean the hall. As you know, we don't have a cleaner at the moment, so many hands made for light work. work yes, yeah, yeah, something like that. So thank you so much if you took a few hours of your day to come and clean. Um, and thank you for, to all of you to try and keep this hall as steady as we can, really, when we use the facilities. Just a little ask. Um, Having spent the day in my garden yesterday, weeds are popping up right, left, and centre, and it's the same here in the little garden gravel area. So again, if you've got you know half an hour, an hour to spare, um, to pull some weeds, um, please let us, me or Colin, know, and we'll just um, provide the gloves. I'm sure we'll provide the gloves in terms of um, for pulling these ones out. Sorry. <laughs> Next week will be our Candidate Sunday, and as part of that, there will be a retiring collections for the Candidates Fund. So if you're not aware of that, that is, candidates are people who are deciding to become Salvation Army officer, and they undergo two years training in London at the training college. So this is an opportunity for each one of us to actually support them financially during those two years of training. So... Do think of that. If this is something that is close to your heart, uh, don't forget your collection for that. You will uh, notice that on our holiness table, we've got two sets of um, flowers this week. And some of them are, one of, one of the bouquets is from Jill Whitelaw, in memory of a mother. And the second one is from Viv Wallington, um, because today would have been our anniversary. So thank you, Viv, and thank you, Jill, for these lovely flowers. I believe now that we're going to listen to the YP band. So, thank you. There's been a couple of weeks after Easter, and uh, we were reminded of the power in the blood of uh, Jesus, and that's what we're going to say this morning. So, there is power in the blood. Thank you very much, Neil. That's very good. 
Now, just, uh, just to follow on from Miriam, I'd just like to publicly say thank you to Beth for leading worship last week. I haven't sent her an email because I wanted to do it personally. Thank you. And uh, uh, it's always uh, good to have confidence to leave the meetings in good hands. And so many people have said how much they enjoyed your worship. So are you free next week? <laughs> uh, and uh, while we were cleaning the other day, I have dusted this so many times I'm fed up with seeing it in the hall. So given it's a raining day, if this belongs to you, okay, you need to take it today, otherwise it will be recycled. Is that okay? Anyone want to claim it? No? Nope. Anyone on the band? Excellent. There we are. Now, what? we had a special visitor on Palm Sunday. Can anyone remember who our special visitor was? I think Grace could tell us. What was a special visitor on Palm Sunday? It was our pantomime horse, wasn't it? Our donkey. And uh, we gave everyone a little key because we used the word key from donkey uh, as the fact that we open the door to the next generation of believers. And uh, we asked the question, who's standing on your shoulders, soldier? That's right, is it? A dear friend, meet and attend, uh, anyone else that comes along. Okay, and uh, we gave you all a key, okay, and it says uh, a little verse from, um, about Peter, I will give you the keys of heaven, who are you going to open the door to? Okay, so that was the challenge. And the challenge was that maybe you could keep your little uh, key on your key hook and then when you went to get your door keys or your car keys, you could just remember who uh, you were thinking of, uh, who you were going to try and open the door to in your na neighbourhood. Is that okay? So what we're going to do now, because you all have forgotten, is, our, um, is I'm going to invite you to turn to the person next to you. And uh, just to say, who was the person that you were going to open the door to? And, uh, and I'll give you, a, uh, and if it goes completely silent, we know that you've forgotten to do that. Uh, uh, and uh, so, I have some spare keys, so let's have, Bethany, would you whip those around? I saw you yawning there, you need a bit of exercise. Okay. <laughs> Bethany, it's very hard in the hospital, don't you? Thank you very much. So if you didn't get a key, put your hand up and, uh, and uh, Bethany, oh, two at the back there. Uh, did you get a key? Okay, it's all about accountability. We asked you to do this. Who are you going to open the door? So, so you have a couple of minutes just to turn to the person next to you. Try and sit next to the person next to you next week because we'll ask the same question next week. To s okay, so off you go then. Okay. Okay, because the fact is that we, um, we need to think about this because if there's no one standing on our shoulders, then effectively we need to turn off the light and use the key to lock the door because that's effectively what will happen. So unless we do engage with a neighbourhood, I'm going to keep pursuing this as a, a little joke, is that if we don't do that, then effectively... After 2,000 years, the church will close. And we don't want that, do we? Thank you very much. Was that you, Paul? You said it very loud there. Well done. If we could take Paul's volume at that level, that would be really good. We don't want that ha to happen, do we? No, we don't. And uh, we want to, uh, to enable as many people as we can. It would be good to see twice as many people here, wouldn't it? Don't feel too sure about that. The trouble is they won't look like me and you. And that in itself will bring a challenge. Oh, okay. Okay, we're going to sing. Uh, did, did I say thank you to the YP band? Yep. I did. Okay, that's fine. Okay, did I say thank you to Beth? Yep. I did. Okay, that's good. Okay, 861. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. Okay, and... Uh, um, we can sing two songs in, uh, together, so if you want to stand for this one, but you have to stand for the second one, okay? So it's up to you. 
her, uh, but if Tash stands up, then everyone behind her will. So, okay, there we go. Thank you. Lovely, and we're going to sing. No, don't, don't sit down. Don't sit. We're going to sing. We are marching in the light of God. Oh, oh, bit of movement there. That was a run. We are marching. We're running. There we are. And uh, during the last verse of the songsters are going to come together and share their song, which is apparently called "Showers of Blessing." Okay. But I've got an umbrella, so it's okay. Thank you.
Lovely. If you'd like to take your seats. Excellent. We look forward to the contribution from the sponsors. Does anyone want the umbrella at all? Use it as a walk with it, Rob. It's, okay. it's good to see Rob with us. He seems to be walking better now. Well done. Excellent. Was it a new knee? Just repaired his knee, so that's good. Now, I'd have to say to you that um, the reading that that we shared earlier was what are my favourites. So, um, and it's, it's, it's a favourite of mine because it really talks about ministry uh, and three important elements of ministry which for me sort of underpin what I was called by God to do. So um, we're going to talk about those three things this morning uh, and hopefully I will inspire you I know that that may seem difficult looking at some of you, uh, uh, to uh, maybe take some of these ideas as we look to uh, influence people. And uh, we want people standing on our shoulders uh, and we need to uh, engage in that. So just to say next week, we will come back to that little exercise we did earlier. And maybe some people would like to share some of the things that they've done in this coming week. Now, the first thing we know about this reading is that Jesus walked with the two travellers. And uh, it, it says there, uh, while they walked, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. 
and he asked them, what are you discussing as you are walking along? What are you discussing as you're walking along? And then it says that Jesus explained to them what was said in all scriptures concerning himself. He explained what was the scripture said. We sing a chorus, and we're going to sing it a little bit later, and it says, Lord, make Calvary real to me. And as our two travelers were going home on that seven-mile walk, Jesus walked with them, and he explained what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. He explained the purpose of Calvary and he opened their eyes to see. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 it says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason ask you to give the reason for your hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect and so the first thing that our reading tells us is that we need to walk alongside people and that's the whole thing that we're going to be doing over this coming week isn't it we're going to be walking with people and we're going to try and discuss with them and talk with them and find out about them. And so we need to walk with them. And the next thing it says, that Jesus ate with them. It says that uh, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. Now, it seems to me that in the Bible, we see some very uh, interesting uh, Mills, and I was just wondering whether we could just have a little bit of a shout out. What mills did Jesus partake of with people? Can you think of any? The barbecue. Yep. I think we're looking at that one, aren't we? Nicholas saying she's doing that one. I think there was uh, a, any others. Little 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 boy. He had his picnic. What did he do? He had five loaves and two fishes. Very good. There was a bit of a food fight between Martha and Mary, wasn't there? Do you remember? She's not helping me. Send her into the kitchen. What's that? Who said someone else and so? Zacchaeus house for tea. Very good. Um, I've got um, these ones. I've got. He got the weddings. He went to a wedding, didn't he? Turned the water into wine. There was picnics. There was feasts. There was parties. There was barbecues, and there was a food fight. When was the last time you, we had a we had a barbecue last night? Anyone have a barbecue yesterday? Bandmaster likes a barbecue, don't you? He had one last night. I caught him there. It was it was a different one. Uh, uh, anyone been to a picnic recently? No. A wedding? Oh, you went to a wedding, didn't you, Margaret? Was it a nice wedding? Very nice one. Very good. Excellent. Anyone had a food fight in their house? Yes. Kathleen seems to appear that she... With your brothers? Yes. Best people to have food fights with. Do you know, one of the ways in which we get to know people is by sharing in food. Now, on our... Um, on Friday, we came and cleaned the hall. And uh, I'm looking for Raymond. Where are you? Oh, Raymond. Raymond came. And me and Raymond, he hoovered and I mopped. Didn't we? And then we got to the bottom and we thought to ourselves, time for a cup of tea. We only done from there to there. But, you know, you have to sort of pace yourself, don't you? And, you know, it was through sitting down and having a cup of tea that we... We found out a bit more about each other, didn't we? We did. 
And I, I found that to be such a blessing that we found out a little bit more about each other. And do you know, when we sit down and eat, we, we talk, don't we? Turn the television off. Make sure that your, uh, your phone is off. You tell married couples in a restaurant, they're not talking to one another and they're looking at their phones. Is that right? Do you know, we need... I like food. Do you like food? And we need to, uh, we need to eat food. It's important for your... Uh, for things. And do you know, Jesus gave thanks. And he gave thanks for that. And so we know that uh, Jesus walked with them, he ate with them, and then uh, just the, th the third thing that we have is that Jesus inspired them. It says in our reading, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? First doctrine of the Salvation Army. If you're a soldier, you would have uh, studied this. You would have thought about this. And it says, we believe, read it with me. We believe that the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments were given by inspiration of God. And that they only constitute the divine rule of Christian faith and practice. The Bible was given by inspiration of God. And as Jesus walked with our two travellers, their hearts burned within as he talked to them and opened the inspired scriptures and opened their eyes to the truth of Calvary. And in our walk with Jesus, in our walk with Jesus, are we inspired by scripture? And does or do our hearts burn within? In 2 Timothy, chapter 4, it says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myth we live in a generation a digital generation where you can justify and find out whatever you want to live the life the way you want to live but you know we need sound doctrine Doctrine which is inspired by Scripture and inspired by God. But where does that place us? Paul, who wrote these words, precedes them in verse 1 and 2 with these words. In the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season to correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time that Nicola and I are with you, we will be preaching the word. We have no apology for that. And we will preach the word on the inspired book of scripture. That is our purpose. That is what we've been called to do. And that is what we will do whilst we are here with And you know, having been inspired, what did our two travellers do? 
it says they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. It is true the Lord has risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. They were inspired. Not, they didn't say to one another, you lock the door and I'll turn the lights off. Does that ever happen in your house? Maybe you live on your own, so you have to do both of those two things. But they were inspired, so inspired that having travelled seven miles, they went back in the darkness to Jerusalem to tell of what Jesus had inspired them. And you know, who's standing on your shoulders? Because if those two disciples hadn't, or travelers didn't do that, then who knows? Maybe the whole jigsaw up to our 2022 will have collapsed. We need to be inspired to go and tell what Jesus has taught us. He inspired us. What did Jesus do? He opened their eyes through scripture. And that is what we need to do. And so we need to walk with people. We need to eat with people. I like that bit. Do you know, in our house group, in our extra slice group, every Thursday afternoon, we don't eat much in our house group. I buy one packet of biscuits. I know. And every Thursday afternoon I say, and this is our packet of biscuits this week. And uh, uh, this week we had Jaffa cakes. We've had such things as party rings and uh, pink wafers. Oh. Oh. Pink wave. I think that was a favourite, wasn't it? If you belong to a uh, uh, in, uh, uh, online group, then you don't get that joy. You can just choose what you want. But uh, we left a few Jaffa cakes, and as I was leaving, people were gathered around the kitchen, and they were eating them, weren't they? They were. They didn't last very long. But there we are. But we need to eat, and we need to inspire. <coughs> This book was given by inspiration of God. If it doesn't inspire you, then really you need to consider what it's all about. Because this was inspired by God to give sound doctrine rather than having itchy ears Jesus said he who has ears let them hear I asked Kelvin whether he'd just play a little chorus through for us this morning and it says Lord make Calvary real to me as those two travelers were traveling down the road and Jesus walked with them. He enabled them to understand the meaning of Calvary. And their eyes were opened and they were inspired to go and tell. My friends this morning, let us sing, Lord, make Calvary real to me Lord make Calvary real to me open my eyes to see victory in Christ for me Lord make Calvary real to me and if Calvary is not real for you this morning if your eyes 
I've been blinded. If your ears are itchy, then don't leave this place without knowing the truth of Calvary and what Christ can mean for you today. Thank you. Someone would like to, to pray for us this morning. Dear Lord, I pray that you will make Calvary real to me, both a personal prayer and a corporate prayer this morning for us each. We pray, Lord, that as we have listened to your word, that we may have been inspired once again. Pray, Lord, that you will take that inspiration so that we may go out into your world and in turn inspire others with this glorious message. Lord, make Calvary real to each and every one of us this morning, we pray. Amen. I'd invite you to stand as we sing that chorus through once more. I'll give you an opportunity to get a bit of breath in, to get that high note. And, uh, uh, and I just... That's our prayer, isn't it? Jesus walked alongside. He opened the scripture. And he showed that Calvary happened. And Jesus was victorious. Open my eyes to see victory in Christ for me, Lord, make Calvary real to me. When was the last time you sang this chorus, eh? Let's stand and sing it. It might be another 20 years. Is that your prayer this morning? Amen. We're going to conclude. You might as well stay standing because we're going to conclude with uh, 421. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusted in his graces? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they washed in bold? Uh, sorry, no. Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? We're singing these uh, three verses.
Dear Lord, we pray your blessing upon each person here. Lord, as we leave this place, we pray that you will inspire us and to just, just have a conversation with someone, even if it's just to say, I went to church yesterday. And we just pray that you would just be with us and help us to uh, take your message so that this is not the last generation, but one of many that takes hold of your words and takes it forward. This we pray in your name. Amen.